Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true note, and welcome back to Fallout 4 Nuka World. Last time we went over there into the Galactic Zone, or Galaxy Zone, or something, I'm pretty sure I keep getting its name wrong, but never mind. And we've almost cleared out that place, but, until we can get the power back on, we can't get whatever the final goodies are up there in the Fallout Space Needle. And today, today we are going to the Safari Zone for the pack. Though I'm returning to the main area on foot because there's this little park over the river. Right here in the middle, kind of actually pretty much smack dab in the middle of all of the zones. So what exactly is this thing for? Well, far as I can see, nothing at all. I can't see anything here but just like the odd bin. Just like, you know, tiny bit of loot off the end and stuff. It's just, I'm frankly, a little bit suspicious. Why would this little island be here with paths leading up to this end if there was nothing there? Okay, maybe there's more there than what I'm seeing. I suspect we might be coming back here later for something secret. Anyway, back to base for a second. Okay, dropped a bunch of stuff off, but there's one thing from last time I want to have a quick look at. This here enraging shish kebab. Need to remind myself how good that thing can get. Weirdly not good, to be honest, even with the extra flame jets, which... Oh, yes, I never actually took Blacksmith 3. That's true, I didn't. Even with the extra flame jets, that's still only, like, what is that? 215 or something. 216, sorry. Um, 216 really just does not do the job against, like anything I've got right now. That is just, yeah, not so great. I tell you what, it's very, very light, and to be honest, I'm carrying this around not for the damage anyway, I'm carrying this around for the enraging effect. If I find, like, you know, one super tough mega enemy, maybe I would try enraging that just for fun. So I'll keep it, but uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to take Blacksmith 3 just for the point of putting the extra flame jets on it. And one other thing I want to visit, I've been told in the comments that uh, the throat slicer that Caitlin here has, I may have slightly underestimated that, so let's get that, shall we? You see, the thing is, I may not be able to afford that in Cap's terms, but of course, for a melee character, especially outside of survival where you can just pick up all of the ammo, ammo is effectively just free money. Because a bullet is not allowed to have a value of below 1. That's different in Fallout 4. Back in Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3, bullets could have very, very low value indeed, but a bullet can't be worth less than 1. So if you're carrying 1,124 5.56 rounds, well, that's just 1,124 caps, isn't it? Lovely. And very quickly, we're not just not paying for the throat slicer, she's paying us for the privilege of taking it off her hands. Marvellous. So this thing already comes with a pretty good mod attached, the serrated hacking blade, chance to cripple, extra limb damage, exceptional damage up to 401. Alright, that's pretty damn good. Oh, and uh, just like the Western Revolver actually requires you to have Gunslinger to improve it, this also requires you to have big leagues. That's nice. Although, ooh... I like the fact that it aesthetically changes so much. That's nice. I wish more weapons did that. Like, normally, like, the changes are very, very modest on melee weapons. It is nice that, uh, yeah, the entire shape of the weapon changes as you go along. Now, what's the only weapon that's above this one here? A uh, chance to cripple extra limb damage, exceptional damage, or target's bleed. Ah, so that's probably the one you want, because you want the... Well, actually, it's causing the bleed damage anyway. That's just even more bleed damage on top, but... I'd almost rather have the chance to cripple, to be honest. And I don't really want to take Blacksmith 3 just for that. Especially as the actual base damage is the same. And yeah, chance to cripple and extra limb damage is, to my mind, actually probably better. Given I've got bleed damage off the legendary effect anyway. Now, people have been saying an awful lot, by the way, this is the most powerful weapon in the game. I'm sorry, but it's really, really not. 401 is very, very powerful indeed, absolutely. But the fish catcher is more powerful at 413. So for like the individual most powerful first hit for a sneak attack, the fish catcher is still better. But I will say, for a fast weapon, that's pretty amazing and I'll definitely be giving it a go. But no, it's not quite the most powerful weapon in the game. Though in terms of DPS, possibly, for a melee weapon at least, it is. Oh yeah, I like that stabbing. That super fast stabbing. That's nice. That is good indeed. Right, let's head to the safari zone and give this thing a go. Bright new day. It's probably about 5am and we are heading north. It has actually uh, struck me, of course, that uh, I think I've been quite unlucky. I don't think I've actually drawn a single hunter's melee weapon this entire game. I think I've got a hunter's hunting rifle 
at some point, which is very appropriate, of course. Hunter's hunting rifle, very, very good indeed. Uh, but nothing for my melee character over here. So, as a result, we don't have anything specifically good at killing animals, which is a shame, because Safari Zone would be obviously a very good time for that sort of thing to get a run out. But never mind, let's give the throat slicer a bit of a go. Anyway, I suspect that's probably pretty darn good. And there's the world of refreshment over to our right, looking... Very lovely against the dawn sky there. Very, very nice indeed. But no, nope, not that way. Instead, let's head over the bridge and find our way to the safari zone. Dry Rock Gulch, of course, will be visiting that later. No hurry for that. Instead, straight on past... Though, I think if I'm reading the map correctly here, it looks to me like I'm heading straight to a building that's not part of Dry Rock Gulch. There's Dry Rock Gulch there, but then there's a gap. And then there's this building here. So what exactly is... Well, there's not even a building here. What am I looking at? Is this just a big car park or something that's been marked on the map? Most likely, I guess. Yes, indeed. It's just a big car park and also contains our first gazelles. Hello, gazelles. Do you have two heads like everything else does? Why, yes. Yes, you do. You go down in one hit nice and easy. Oh, you've got very spindly legs. You're ridiculously spindly legs, in fact. Marvellous. Obviously, Gazelle's this DLC's version of the Radstag. Cook them for extra carry capacity. Let's actually go up to them and see if they even attack me. Hello, are you actually aggressive in any way? You just run away when you see me. Hello, I've got enough. Didn't mean to do that. Though on the plus side, the throat slicer did just live up to its name. I did slice off one of its heads, but only the left one. What did I have against the left one? And then, aha, off the parking lot... Employees only section. What is this little area up here for? Hello? Ooh. Detected. Detected but not in danger. What the Ooh, hello there! I was wondering what that thing was. Is that a stingwing nest? Okay. I mean, I was a bit more worried than that. When I kind of saw this mysterious thing that looked a little bit organic, I was thinking. In just a second, is that about to actually kind of, you know, unfurl into a giant mega mutant or something? But no, no, just a stingwing out of the top, that's fine. That's a legendary stingwing chaser, though. Also, apparently I just started Safari Adventure, because I overheard something about a gator claw infestation. Should I be worried about the gator claws? I'm not sure I've seen a gator claw yet. What's a gator claw? Also, where did that stingwing go? Hello there, screw you. Operator's left leg, 30% chance to ignite melee attackers once every 20 seconds. All right, but to be honest, the amount of damage that deals out is so small, it's really not worth bothering with for the most part. Let's just check out these here houses first. Can't get through there. Anything good inside? Looks like just a bunch of fairly normal stuff. There's Oh, I see power armor in the corner. One crate probably contains explosives. Nothing major. Any way I can get in up top? Nope, no hole in the roof, very unlucky. Can get into this one though, that one's only advanced locked. Hello there, what have we got in here? Literally nothing of value and there was an open back door anyway. The game really does not reward you for having advanced lock picking at this point, shame. Now, where's the front door to the safari zone now we've explored the outskirts here? Here we are, the safari adventure. Now, I'm going to guess we're going to run into someone who's going to explain a little bit about the plot relatively early on. Now let's be careful. Not sure exactly where these bloody gator claws are. Wild melon blossom, lovely. What do we have here? I mean, it would be. Oh, hello there. Are you? Are you a friend? Lady, see to see you kill monster. You friend? Yes, absolute. <laughs> Raised by apes. That's a bit of an assumption there. Uh, why are you talking like that, Sito? Are you okay? Why are you talking like that? Sito, sorry, Sito, not talk good. Sito, family, not talk. Sito, not talk to man or lady in long time. You kill monster alone. Monster strong, but you stronger. Sito, happy you kill monster. Monster hurt Sito and Sito family. Are you referring to a gator claw? Because I actually haven't run into one of those yet. I just killed a stingwing outside the park. What the heck are those things? Are they some sort of a death claw? Death? Claw? Sito not know. Sito only know death bad and monster bad. 
Oh dear, apparently uh, the game's assuming I've already seen and killed one Gator Claw. I haven't, I think I just triggered one to activate and possibly he killed it inside the park. Well, it can't hurt you anymore, Sito. No, many more monster. No, stop. Sito kill monster. New monster come. Sito kill monster again. New monster come again. Monsters not stop. Help Sito stop monsters? Seems reasonable to me. Do you know where the monsters are coming from by any chance? Do you have any idea where they're coming from? Sito not know. New friend, follow Sito. Sito show you thing. Thing to help kill monsters. Okay then. Oh, you've just got a board. Well, you've done well to hold out against the bloody Gator Claws with only a board. Blimey heck. So, back into the employees only section. Through a gate here, through what presumably used to be an animal enclosure. And where are we go Oh, Sito! Why would you have done this? Oh, level 58, you're not particularly tough, are you? Blimey, you went down very easy. Sito didn't do anything, thank you. That was all flipping me. And here we are in the primate house. This is presumably Sito's family, right? Hello, Sito. Sito. This home. This family. <laughs> no worry. They not hurt you. You friend Sito mean you friend family. Great. I always wanted to be best friends with a bunch of gorillas. Sito glad new friend like family. Sito have story. Story help stop monsters. Sito eat with family. Wrinkly man come inside home. Wrinkly man hurt. Sito try help. Wrinkly man say he make monsters. Sito mad at wrinkly man. Monsters hurt family. Wrinkly man sorry monsters hurt family. He gives Sito shiny thing. He say shiny thing help Sito stop monsters. Sito try help more, but Wrinkly Man die. Sito put Wrinkly Man in ground, but keep shiny thing. Now give shiny thing new friend. Help Sito. Okay, Dr. McDermott's holotape. All right. This is Dr. Darren McDermott, last known survivor <laughs> at the Safari Adventure <coughs> Replication Facility. This is my final recording. I've done something horrible. <coughs> the thing I created, the thing I called the Gator Claw, <coughs> they must be destroyed. They can't be tamed. They can't be <coughs> Their sheer ferocity is like nothing I've ever seen. And now, the Nukagen re <coughs> replicator is out of control. It's producing them at an alarming rate. Please, somebody, anybody, find my passcode. Or Dr. Hines, <coughs> shut down the replicator before it's... <coughs> Okay, so there was some form of cloning machine or something, and I'm going to need a passcode from one of the two of them to shut it down. Now, he said he himself had a passcode, and Sito said that he buried him. So if I could find out where he was buried and dig him up, maybe I could get the passcode off the corpse. Or maybe this note here is in some way relevant. If you're reading this note, then you've met Marco Sito. His father, Marcus, was killed in a super mutant attack on our settlement, and I'm afraid my own wounds will be taking me as well. I don't have much time, and I'm terrified to send him out into this world alone. I don't have any choice. I'm begging you to please take him in and see that he gets the food and shelter he needs in order to survive. Tell our little Sito that his parents love him, and that if he's looking for us, we'll always be inside his heart. Sito's mother, I'm Melda. So Sito was, what, left as 
a baby or a very young kid with this note, but he ended up, yeah, here rather than with a family. Did someone else dump him here? Because he couldn't have ended up, or his parents left him here hoping someone else would find him, but the apes raised him instead. Let's see if we can get any more details here. So it seems like the gator claws are the monsters are coming from an animal cloning facility somewhere beneath Safari Adventure. Shiny thing. Help, new friend. Very helpful indeed, but do you have any idea where that facility might be? Do you know anything about a cloning facility around here? New friend say strange words. Sito not know what new friend want, but Sito know more about Wrinkly Man. Sito see Wrinkly Man come from big triangle house long time ago. Go to big triangle house. Find cloning facility. Stop monsters. Sito come with new friend. Sito help. No, no, no. You should probably stay with the family. Also, can the gorillas help? How would the gorillas be able to help? Hang on. Now I just want to know what they could theoretically do. Can you get your family to help us? Chris big and strong. Chris help new friend and Sito. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so now I've got... Do I have Sito as a friend now? Do I have Chris? Which one's Chris? I'm guessing you, because you're the biggest. Well, we seem to have Sito and a gorilla following us around, but I haven't lost Lone Wanderer, so he's not actually formally a companion. Best of both worlds here. So, Triangle House, they said, nearby to the gate. Alright, so we've got ourselves, yeah, a nice gator claw right here. Does indeed look kind of like a variant of a death claw. Let's have a little... Luxy round here, see what we can find in this area first. Just a whole bunch of cages. And then, oh, hello. Yes, indeed, Gator Claws even do the little dance, but they are not tough. They are going down in, yeah, four swings from Throat Slicer. Oh, this is interesting. So, um, Chris is not just a gorilla, he's a ghoul rilla. A ghoul rilla king at level 72. That's very nice. I like the idea of a ghoul gorilla. so I wonder if all the gorillas are actually ghoul gorillas, or if he's just a bit more... Well, you can see his face has kind of half fallen off there a little bit, so all right. That's intriguing. Not a gorilla, a ghoul gorilla. And here we are, the welcome centre. Kind of the shape of it, this is indeed Big Triangle House. Got it. Let's head inside here then. This Big Triangle House. It have door seat on never open. Door Cito never open, but aha! Hello there, how do grenades work against you? Here, have a grenade. You see that? Yeah, you really shouldn't have been doing the big Rory thing, should you? You should have just attacked me. Lovely. There we are. Yeah, we really could use some higher level ones, to be honest. Be interesting to see, like, where these things officially came from. Are they officially a variant of Deathclaw? What exactly? Yeah, who is this doctor? Because this doctor was recent because Sito knows him. So why did this doctor come here and what exactly was he looking for? I mean, what sort of doctor comes to a theme park and then turns on the replicator and just makes gator claws? What's the point? I could see the Institute doing something like that, but who was this guy? What was he doing? Why? Let's see if we can get any information out of these here terminals. Ooh, also, Nuka Rush. I like the sound of that one. Note from pre-war, we're continuing to have security issues with the misguided and radical AFAD, Animals, Friends and Defenders group. These individuals can be visually identified by their animal masks, various animal tattoos, and on occasion, full animal suits. If you spot any of these individuals, do not attempt to approach, contact the security office or activate the nearest Protectron pod. Okay, so the uh, the Fallout equivalent of Peter were a bunch of people dressed up in animal gear that tried to protest the park, and of course, presumably their costumes would be what the pack is using now. Any and all deliveries that are received and marked Project Cobalt should be forwarded to the secure beverage laboratory at the Nuka World bottling plant. That's the second mention of Project Cobalt. We heard about that in the Galactic area as well. These items are not for employee use. Any employee that opens these deliveries without authorization will have their employment terminated immediately. And that's from, ooh, John Caleb Bradburton himself. That's intriguing. Due to a security breach by the AFAD group at the cloning facility, a code grizzly has been initiated. 
please refer any visitors or requests about the facility directly to Mr. Brad Burton's office. In addition, the Angry Anaconda construction site is now off limits to anyone other than security personnel. The coaster's superstructure has been determined to be dangerously unstable. We wish to avoid personal injury to any of our employees. So just before the bombs fell, a group of slightly mad animal liberation lot got into an animal cloning lab. But what did they do? A bunch of cages, but the plaques don't have anything on them. Fine, let's be on our way here. Who are you exactly? Pre-war money. AFAD Manifesto. Marvellous. This was one of the guys who broke in. Chipmunk, tell them what our name means. What are you doing? I have the thing running right now. Don't just say AFAD. Tell them what it stands for. I'm trying to do something serious here, Rabbits, and I already have the recording started. We'll take this out of the recording later. Just tell them. <sighs> Fine. <clears throat> we, the members of the Animal Friends and Defenders, have an important message to those who are causing the destruction of the environment. We will not stand idly by and watch our animal brothers and sisters get hunted to extinction. We will take action. We will not remain complacent while corporations abuse our animal brothers and sisters in the name of so-called science. We will take action. We will not turn our backs as... Oh, don't forget the part about slaughtering the animals needlessly for food. Uh, you know I'm recording, right? You see that red light, yeah? <laughs> I'm sorry, Chimonk. I was just trying to, you know... Just toss that tape and we'll try again. And when we're done, don't throw out the good tape and keep the bad one like last time. You know how you can tell who not to trust in this world? Anyone who ever uses the phrase, so-called science. So the lab status had gone code grizzly, which I'm assuming means bad, full security lockdown. The laboratory can only be accessed by Dr. Hine, Dr. McDermott and Mr. Brad Burton. Any attempt to breach the facility will be met with lethal force. Contact LB Shelton at the security office for details. Okay, I don't know who a Shelton is, I don't know where the security office is, so that's not going to work. And Code Grizzly was indeed the full security lockdown, the most serious there was. Below it were Dingo, Orangutan and Chinchilla. Now, ransom note, this is intriguing. Mr. Brad Burton or one of his lackeys. We have tried doing this the nice way and you haven't played along. You even went so far as to ban us from your parks. Well, sir, this is a free country despite what you corporate fat cats think. AFAD is going to show you, you don't have the control you thought your money buys you. We have your top scientist, Dr. Hine, held hostage right where you plan to build your precious angry anaconda. Come alone and we can discuss the terms of his release. Bring the police, you lose your star employee. Okay, and we're going to need his access code to get into here, aren't we? Right, now where's the angry anaconda, Cito? It seems like Dr. Hine was kidnapped and taken somewhere called the Angry Anaconda. We find that and we can find his passcode to get into the cloning facility. Sound like name of snake from old zoo. Oh, maybe Dr. Under Giant Metal Snake. Yes, Giant Metal Snake. That sounds good. The, uh, Giant Metal Snake. Of course. New friend funny. How not see giant metal snake? It big. What word? Ride. Ride like big snake. See to see from everywhere. Very big. Very snaky. It uphill behind Sue. Maybe doctor man there. Sounds good to me. Good job, Sito. I knew you'd be helpful. Sito help. Sito like help, new friend. Alright, let's go to the giant metal snake then. And I think I see it in the distance over there, the new roller coaster, the Angry Anaconda. But let's just head through the park and see what we can find while we're going around here. Grab all that lovely pre-war money, because pre-war money means, of course, tokens down the line. And we got ourselves a new Gator Claw. Has he seen me yet? No, he has not. And that means you're about to die. Ooh, you get a lot of hits with this thing. Screw you. Dead, 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 dead. And hello. What did you kill? That's... Oh, no! You killed a Bramilov, you git! I love the Bramilov. Admittedly, this one's not quite so cute and fluffy, but never mind. 
And we picked up a new recipe just a second ago, didn't we? The uh, Nuka Rush. Let's see what one of those is when it's at home. Nuka Rush requires a victory and a wild, but gives you 999 hit points. So I'm assuming that is, in fact, the game's cap. I've never got a character up to, uh, to max hit points, but I'm guessing, yeah, that's where the hit point cap is. So a Nuka Rush is a guaranteed full health top up, even in the event you literally have maxed out hit points and 40 action points on top of that. Fine, I can't really see a scenario where you'd ever need anything that powerful, but it's nice that it exists. And just up the stairs in the middle here, we found, well, we've got ourselves one little nuka bob. We've also found Cappy's Treehouse. Now, I know for a fact that there is going to be a medallion up in that treehouse. Question is, how exactly are we supposed to be getting to this here treehouse? Oh, it's a flipping maze. You know what the great thing about me is? Screw your maze. Yeah, by the way, how are you planning to get to me? Oh, you can as well, you git. Well, that's fine. I'll just nail you in the face. And over the top. And over the top. And over the top. And I think we're here. Marvellous. Oh, yeah. How are we supposed to get up top here? Is this, uh, is this an entrance? So there's just a little hedge maze. That with a jetpack, you can skip absolutely all of that. And luckily, Seto and his ape are already here. And this will also give us a good chance to see what's actually in this land, which is nice. So, over here we've got ourselves... I see a, a big boat. Why is there a boat? I don't know. There's a boat, some sort of building, a big enclosure with a cave at the back of it. Okay, there's the construction site for the Angry Anaconda roller coaster that we know is dangerously unsafe. Water down there. Maybe, maybe Maya Lurks or something. And then we've got... Just another building over there. Don't know what that is. That's the primate house. Okay, this world feels relatively small, all things considered. It doesn't feel that big at all. And there's our medallion. Lovely. And I think we've seen everything this side. Oh, hello there. You were an army person. Apparently you died. That's a shame. Well, one new Coca-Cola victory. Always welcome. And <gasps> two packs of duct tape. Yes. And a new cocade ticket roll for another 800 tickets. Very nice. And it would seem that the army tried to hold out up here by the looks of it. That is, yeah, seems to be what's going on here. And they have left me, ooh, some molotovs. Very useful for taking out any turrets there are. And a generic chest, nothing major there. Right, let's head over here and find out, yeah, what exactly is this massive great boat for? Also, I've just upset a gator claw. That's fine. So a massive shamrock and a boat and a cafe. What am I missing here? Little house around the back of the auditorium. Anything here? Yes! Nuka hearty! Good, got ourselves a new Nuka recipe in the little shack around the back of the auditorium in the safari zone. Good. Now I can't help but wonder if there's anything actually going on up in this here boat. Let's just drop off here for a second, get my action points back. And then up into the boat we go. Lovely. By any chance... Would you have hidden? Nope, there is nothing special in the boat. How very, very sad. And one reptile house over here. Why do we get the feeling there might just be gate claws in the reptile house? Let's see what we got going on here. I'm kind of hoping for something a little bit nastier than what we've had so far. Ooh, a gate claw, but on the ground. That's... Oh, no, you've decided to get up now. Can you even get over to me? Oh, you can because there's no door. Yes, then you probably can. Aha, a downstairs area. Okay, and where's this bringing me? Bunch of rats. Nothing major. New color orange down here, but reptile house tour guide terminal. Okay, what have we got here? In the event that a visitor has been bitten or stung by any of our specimens, don't panic, follow these procedures. Confirm the visitor has a valid park admission ticket with the liability release printed on the back. And if they have a valid park admission, they must immediately fill out a Safari Adventure instant report. The reports are available in Nukatown, USA at the main office. If the visitor is paralysed or otherwise unable to move on their own, inform them that a Nuka World emergency stretcher can be dispatched for $400. Perfect. Once the Safari Adventure Instant Report has been completed, first aid will be provided, cost of materials and paramedics fee for labour will be billed to the visitor. If the visitor does not have a valid park admission, please call security as soon as possible. Marvellous. I'd say it's a terrifying dystopic view, but I imagine there are parts of America where this is pretty much what happens. 
Due to recent incidents, the deaf adder, the black mamba, and the inland taipan specimens have been removed from the little kid's reptile petting zone. In future, employees are strongly encouraged to read the warnings on our enclosures before transferring specimens. <laughs> Alright, cross the bridge to the very north edge of the safari zone right now, and we've got ourselves, yep, more gate claws. Can't deny, the Throat Slicer has a lot of power to it. This is indeed a very, very strong little knife. Now, what was the deal with this cage here that had the cave at the back? What exactly is the purpose of the cave? Because obviously we're going into the cave. Because... Ooh, bear cave! <gasps> bears! I love bears! Sito, just stay at the back here for a second. We're going bear hunting, it would seem. Ooh! Are we going... Are they fighting each other? Who wins in a fight? Presumably the gate claw, right? Well, actually, bears can be really tough and gate claws do not seem that bad at all. Let's just see who wins this fight first. Let's not get involved. Sito, no, don't do it! Uh, gate claw. Oh, it's just a stunted. Oh, that's cheating. I tell you what, it's not even doing that bad for a stunt at level 16. Sito, meanwhile, has a stick and is not really helping that much one way or the other. And now Sito decided to get the attention of the bear. Well, bloody done, Sito. The gorilla is just standing on top of the bear. Perfect. Right, deeper in we go. Presumably there's more than one bear here, right? So beyond the back of the bear cave, there's a safari adventure maintenance terminal. I've just accidentally found my way into a backstage area. A note from B. Ross. They sent me out to the northern habitats today to clean up some vomit from a child who ate too much. Not sure why they picked me again. When I got back, Tomlinson and Freak were just sitting at the break table talking quietly. The moment I came into the room, they both nervously looked at me, got up and left. Something's going on around here. Okay. Fremd called in sick today, so I had to change out the lights in the reptile house. It took me almost six hours since the place was so damn crowded. I was putting the equipment back into the maintenance shed, and I saw Fremd and Tomlinson sitting in Fremd's car. I saw Fremd hand something over, and Tomlinson got out and walked away. I need to get to the bottom of this. Okay, what was going on here? I decided to put a holotape recorder in an empty locker next to Framps. I didn't get anything for days, but finally I scored big when I picked up a conversation between Frank and Tomlinson. They were talking about something called Project... Ooh, Project Cobalt again. What is this? The work orders were piling up, but I couldn't stand waiting anymore. I finally cornered Fremp and confronted him about Project Cobalt. He tried to lie his way out of it at first, but he finally gave in and told me it's a joint cooperation project between the US military and Nuka World. I couldn't believe it. I mean, what the hell could we have here that the military needed? I had to know more. Fremp told me to drop it, but to hell with that guy. I'm taking this to Brad Burton himself if I have to. Oh. Why develop gator claws? Because you want to create some sort of terrifying, clonable death claw beast. I mean, we know obviously the Enclave tried to use tame death claws to their advantage. What if the US military was trying to do the same with... Gator claws, just monsters you can drop in on the Chinese and let them wreak havoc. That could make sense. And then one note from Frank. It's been two weeks since Ross asked me about Cobalt. I told that idiot to drop it, but he wouldn't listen. All of a sudden our department gets noticed that Ross is taking an unscheduled vacation and no one seems to know where he's gone. Now they want me to purge his terminal before the end of October. I hate to wipe all of this out, but I can't refuse. If I don't do what the security department says, I might end up on vacation too. Oh, so Ross ended up disappeared because he asked about Project Cobalt. Well, that's interesting. And then we had another cage over here, but this one had water in it. A big cage with water. What was this for then? And oh, it's just another gate claw coming out from a little swim. These things do not have enough armor. They need way more armor than the 100 damage resistance they've got. Right now, they just go down way too easy. Oh, no, this is interesting. A little, presumably, security office here. And one of what looks like the pack locked away, but it's not, of course. It's one of the AFAD labs. That guy has... Wait, hang on. Attention. That can't be one of the guys that was the original AFAD, because he'd be a skeleton by now. Hang on, over the top, over the top. How do we get around the back of this here building? I'm oh, sorry, the back is round. Here, here we go, hidden behind this bush, lovely. So in through here, one gazelle, and you are... Oh no, this was the pack. This was the pack, it's just presumably he came and stole his gear from around here. 
Alright, I've been all around the safari zone and I can't find anything else much more interesting. By the way, I know it's technically the safari adventure, but I'm just going to keep calling it the safari zone because uh, a childhood misspent playing too much Pokemon means safari zone just rolls off my tongue a lot more easily. And now, it looks like if I head up the river that runs through the safari zone, I'll get uh, potentially something of interest that, yes, will lead me directly to... Oh! And I apparently I've already reached the right area. Marvellous. Now, I've got to find wherever it is that AFAD were holding Dr. Hine. And also, what exactly is out here? One Gator Claw, nothing major. Hello, have a grenade over there, you. Here we go, something lit up over here. Though I suspect actually, yeah. Right here, in fact. Hang on, what am I even looking at here? Ah! A trailer right here, but more importantly, get myself a new fusion core. I am burning through these pretty bloody quickly, it must be said. Locked tight. Locked tight expert locked door. Fine, any other way in by any chance? There we are, one key, AFAD key and AFAD interrogation, right. Stop playing innocent, Dr. Hine. We know what's going on in that laboratory of yours. Yeah, yeah, Hine. We know what's going on down there. Are you going to shut up and let me do this, rabbit? Sorry, Mike. I just want to scare the guy. For God's sake, rabbit. You're supposed to use our code names. Both of you shut up. Now look, Dr. Hein. We know Brad Burton has you performing cloning experiments on the animals you've locked up in that torture chamber you call a lab. I can assure you, we treat all of our specimens with the utmost respect. There's really no reason to keep me here against my will. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Dr. Heim. We brought you to the angry Anaconda construction site for a very specific reason. As a supposed man of science, how can you be so stupid to allow Bradbert to build this thing so close to where you're keeping the animals? Do you have any idea the lasting damage it'll do to them? Well, do you? Look, why don't you just untie me and then let me head back to the laboratory? I'll talk to Mr. Bradburton, and I'm sure we can all have this misunderstanding cleared up in no time. Hi, oh, and yeah, nice try, Hein, but you aren't going anywhere. Hey, Mike, Ingrid, something's going on outside. <sighs> what is it, Rabbit? I don't know. People running around everywhere. Maybe looking for us. Maybe not. Looks pretty crazy. All right. Rabbit, stay with Dr. Hine. Robin, let's walk the perimeter of the place with Mouse and see what the hell is going on. And obviously that'll be the moment the bombs fell, because the bombs did fall at dramatic moments, always at the most dramatic moment possible, in fact. So by the looks of it, there'll be no way to get actually up onto the track of the angry anaconda, like, uh, it's not really designed that way. Just maybe from... no, that's never gonna work. I'll give it a go, but that's never gonna be enough. No, not even bloody close to getting the altitude you'd need to get up there. But, nope, again, definitely not. In that case, let's just go and grab that code and we can get ourselves into the cloning lab. As would appear, there's nothing actually interesting around the angry anaconda itself. There we go. Beautiful. All right, code in hand, back to the terminal. never been here. Now, presumably, as we are in the Gator Claw cloning facility, there's gonna be Gator Claws. So that's gonna be fun. Admittedly... No sign of anything yet. Oh, hello there. You're going to die now. now. This is interesting. Psycho. Why would there be a dose of Amor? Why is there Psycho in a cloning lab? Maybe these tapes will be able to tell us the answers. There's a couple around here. This one's presumably the earliest. This is Dr. Darren McDermott. Last known survivor at the Safari Adventure Replication Facility. Continuing my personal recordings. It's been... Hell, I don't know how long it's been. I think I stopped counting months ago. Or was it years? Even with the scientific equipment at my disposal, it's clear there's no going back from what I've become. The radiation from the bombs has taken its toll on my body, twisting and deforming my physical appearance. 
But instead of falling into despair, I've embraced the change and used it as a basis for my new cloning research. Perhaps this curse will turn out to be a blessing. I just wish Dr. Heim was here to guard my hand. I feel lost without him. Okay, so Dr. McDermott was in fact one of the original doctors. The reason he's still here is because, of course, he became a ghoul. And he was trying to use the technology here to de-ghoulify himself, but, as it turns out, utterly impossible. This is Dr. Darren McDermott, last known survivor at the Safari Adventure Replication Facility, continuing my personal recordings. I've been continuing to modify the Nucagen Replicator to provide a source of food. It's ironic that the very same device Nuka World was using to create its animal specimens for leisure has become integral to my survival. Using a tissue sample from a cow, I was able to replicate a viable clone, consume it as food, then use the remaining tissue to create another. I figure as long as the Nucagen Replicator continues to function, I'll have an endless supply of food for years to come. Dr. Hein would be proud of my accomplishment. It's sad. It's been so long I've almost forgotten what he looked like. My god, it's been decades now. Maybe even a century or more, has it? Has it been so long? Well, I'll, uh, I'll continue recording later. The horror of ghoulification continues in this game. I like how ghouls are kind of the focus of this one, how horrific it is process of qualification. He's completely lost track of time and he suspects a century may have passed but he can't even remember for certain. What have we got in the terminal? And there we are the 23rd of October 2077 and at 1am Dr. Hine was called out to the angry anaconda construction site. Of course that was a trap. That was when he fell into the hands of AFAT. Oh no this is interesting. I've had my third request for a budget increase denied due to resources being diverted to this project Cobalt. So Project Cobalt wasn't anything to do with the Safari Zone because the lead scientist at the Safari Zone didn't know what it was and was annoyed that it was drawing money away. So it wasn't the mass cloning of the Gate Claws, whatever it is. Thanks to Dr. McDermott's help, I've been able to isolate the segmentation issues I've been having with PB041. Polar bears on the last segment kept coming out of the Nucagen replicator inside out and then exploding. <laughs> Oh dear. I assume this was due to an incorrect sequence, but I've never seen such a violent reaction from a specimen before. It was actually a rather spectacular result, strictly from a scientific point of view. Of course, that is a reference to the film The Fly, where gorillas that were sent through the transporter uh, came out kind of inside out. Very, very whole. I love The Fly. It's one of kind of the best body horror monster films ever made. It's beautiful. I think I drank too much last night when ringing in the new year. Woke up right next to the Nucagen Replicator's main terminal and a program was running. It looks like I was trying to sequence an anteater with 16 giraffe-type legs, scales, four eyes and two tails. Amusingly, even in my inebriated state, I've created a fairly viable specimen sequence that could possibly work. I don't think the animal would last very long, but my scientific curiosity says I should give it a try. I have to consult Dr. McDermott. Oh dear. So, not exactly ethical science happening down here then. The other toner, however, belongs to Dr. McDermott. And the dates are all slightly screwed up, date out of range. So journal entry date out of range. My attempts at creating the gate claw continue. I have the correct samples of the Jackson Chameleon and the American Alligator in the mix. But keeping sample Q334 stable continues to elude me. If I intend to create a guardian creature for Safari Adventure, it has to be able to listen to and comprehend my commands. I was hoping the brain cells from Q334 would do the trick, but I've seen failure after failure. I hesitate to throw the switch and see what happens. What if I can't control it? What if it ends up attracting more attention to the park? I think I'll check the sequence a few more times just to be sure. What's Q334? We're supposed to make it way more intelligent. Why do you get the feeling that might be the final boss of this area? While foraging for food and supplies day, I stumbled across the remains of an astonishing biological specimen. It was humanoid in appearance, but much larger. It had greenish coloured skin and roughly human features. It appeared to be wearing clothing and had been recently killed by what looked like bullet wounds. After dragging it back to my laboratory, I began an extensive examination. My conclusion was that it was a genetic mutation of a human. I can only hope that whatever caused this remarkable mutation can be extracted and used it for my own experimentation. 
I'm entering this into the record as sample Q334. Right, so this is after the war, and he found a super mutant, and he decided to try and mix super mutants in with alligators. So it's actually not really a, a death claw, it's more of a kind of a super mutant alligator cross with a bit of chameleon thrown in. Though admittedly, chameleon is also the basis for death claw, so they do have a common ancestor. How long has it been since the bombs fell and transformed me into this withered up husk of a man? I can't even remember how much time has passed. I've started talking to myself aloud now. I think this loneliness is finally getting to me. I haven't seen a friendly human in such a long time. I've almost forgotten what it's like. Trying to concentrate on work is getting more and more difficult. Maybe it would be better if I ended it all now. But then I asked myself, who would protect this laboratory from those who would seek to misuse its gifts? I suppose I have no choice. And then finally, it's been decades now and my metamorphosis continues. My body is changing, adapting to the radioactive fallout in the air. Instead of my organs shutting down and my life being slowly drained away, my body is fighting back. My skin has thickened and become heavily wrinkled as if it's attempting to resist the radiation rather than allow it to penetrate my body, rather than be horrified by the changes. I've decided to study them, to learn more about the effect this is having on the human body. Perhaps I'll use this data from these studies to find a cure one day, but for now, I'm just happy to be alive. Now this is intriguing, because that's the second person in this DLC that's mentioned the possibility of a cure for ghouls. Rachel, the doctor who left Oswald to go and find a cure, and now this person here, Dr. McDermott. I'm starting to wonder if this could be something they're leaving hanging for Fallout 5, because obviously, you know, they put clues for the next Fallout game in the previous one. Like, Elder Maxon, as a child, is in Fallout 3. And the replicated man in Fallout 3 obviously very clearly leads into Fallout 4. So it's very likely there are clues in Fallout 4 for whatever's going to be in Bethesda's Fallout 5, even if they might franchise it out uh, before that happens, just like they did with New Vegas. The question is, could they be leading up to something? A cure for ghoulification? And why do I not like this room one little bit? Got one. Ooh, we've got a big gator claw over there. No, 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 Yes, unlock whatever this door is. Hello, are you a replicator? Yeah, hatch. This is... No, presumably that's just a shortcut out of here. Fine. So, what exactly is a replicator and where do the big creatures come out from? Also, presumably, if I just take this, he said there was only one generator left. I take that fusion core, surely I've just shut it down. Because now there's no generators left. That was the only functional one. And ah, that over there will be a replicator, in fact. Hello. I'm guessing creatures come out of this thing. Yes. And one final journal as well. This is Dr. Darren McDermott. Last known survivor at the Safari Adventure Replication Facility. Continuing my personal recordings. I ventured outside today and almost got spotted by a group of wasteland scavengers that had wandered into Safari Adventure. Therefore, against my own better judgment, I'm going to attempt to splice a few of the more dangerous samples I have left in cold storage. I need to use the Nukagen Replicator to create some sort of specimen that's formidable, yet trainable. Something that can protect me, but most importantly, protect this facility. It will take some time to work out the chemistry and mathematics of the data, but I'm confident I can create a viable specimen within a few years. I know Dr. Hine would have objected to this course of action, but he isn't here, and I can't let this equipment fall into the wrong hands. So in the end, the gate claws were created to try and stop anyone ever making it to the replicator. Well, relatively earnest intentions, I guess, but let's just destroy this thing if we can. So we know about the Gator Claw. What else did he make previously? 
Codename none. Subject failed to survive the incubation period. Cellular breakdown occurred within one hour of sequencing. Sample remitted to incinerator. Next attempt will adjust formula mixture from sample Q334. Again, no code name. Subject survived incubation period, but exhibited extreme levels of ionizing radiation. Contamination makes the subject too dangerous for command recognition patterns. Subject remitted to incinerator. Next sample will adjust again, sample Q334. So that was just attempts to make the gate claw before he was successful. Got it. Let's just disable this program, shall we? Lovely. And now I've got to clear this area of gate claws, and apparently there's two more. And here they come right now, in fact. Dead and dead, and we're done. That is the entirety of... What do you mean, deal with Sito and his family? I don't know the way you just used the expression deal there, game. We don't have to deal with Sito and his family. He's fine. We like him. He can stay. Though, admittedly, we're about to hand this error over to the pack. That's not going to go down well, is it? Sito. New friend done? No more monsters? No more monsters indeed. Only your family, blimey heck. And they should not be coming back. Your family's safe, Sito. Sito, so happy. How Sito thank new friend? By leaving and never coming back. Uh, your plans, yeah, share the park with my friends. Hang on, let's just put on a nice uh, dress for this. I have some friends moving in here. But if you play it cool, we can all get along. Can you do that? Sito trust you. Sito like more new friends. Before go, here, new friend take. It better shiny thing Sito save. Sito want to give. Thank you, new friend. Sito always remember you. And he's, ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Sito shiny slugger refills action points on a critical hit. So that is, that's relentless, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's relentless. So it's a, that's a unique variant because that's a, um, yeah, like a super sledge baseball bat, but you can't normally get a super sledge baseball bat. So that is in fact a completely unique variant. Very, very cool. All right, we'll have a look at that in a second. Right, let's just head out the back way and see where this brings us out and then get this area assigned to the pack, of course. Hello there, Nuka World Door. And this here is down in the river. Not sure if this would be openable if you had high enough lock picking to allow you to skip to the end. I would guess not. I'm guessing that's kind of locked from the inside or something because it would be odd they'd let you skip the door that was like purely for Dr. Hines' key. There we go. The flag is on top of the big triangle house. Beautiful. So let's get this area assigned, of course, to the pack. They'll love it. There's gorillas and everything. Over you go to the pack. Nice. And that should be the safari adventure completed. Lovely. 508 XP. Very good. Now, let's just check here. There was only one medal here. Yep, the only medal was, in fact, from the treehouse. We've already got that sorted. So now we've just got one medal from the minecart ride and one medal from the world of refreshment to go. No more medals here. Cappy in a haystack, however, we still have to find. Let's see where we've got the cappies. So we've got one cappy... Looks like, like, either right... No, no, not inside, but basically it'll be on the side of the primate house. And one that's up there in what I think is like the food area. Got it. So it looks like, yeah, if it's at the side of the primate house, that might be it. So kind of in this sort of direction. Gotcha. It's on the back of this here gorilla sculpture. Perfect. And here you are. One clue. Beautiful. And mysteriously, I'm doing the jumpy hoppy in animation to get in my power armor today. Lovely. Oh, hello. I've upset a gorilla king. Are you the... What? What did I upset you? I'm very, very sorry, but that means you have to die, my good man. I think I've... I don't know why I've upset the Gorilla King. You are my friend. I just wanted to keep being friends, but screw you in that case. Even get some Gorilla meat. Don't know what I can do with that, but I'll check. And the other one is right at the end of the maze. And that is the Cappies of the Safari Zone. And just a couple of things I want to look at to finish off today. Of course, Sito's shiny slugger. 
The spiked rocket upgrade is presumably... Oh, hello. I don't know if this was unlocked already or something, but I've never seen any of this before. So this thing came with the spiked rocket, but it can be upgraded to puncturing 468. 505! What the... Okay, people, you're wrong. The throat slicer is not the new most powerful weapon in the game. At over 500 damage, I've never seen anything more powerful than Keto's shiny slugger. That's insanity. Does it get any better than that? No, okay. That's as good as it gets. So we've got... Oh, but... 468... Wait. 468 plus 75! <laughs> Electrical damage and chance to stun, as well as being armor-piercing as well. The searing one, however, adds fire damage is armor-piercing. Chance to cripple extra limb damage, superb damage. That's probably... That's probably better. That's probably way better, in fact. That's insanity. The heated rocket is... That's fire damage. What does that have? Where's... Oh, okay, that's just worse because it's only science three. Uh, right, I've changed my mind. I've decided I'm actually going to uh, unlock blacksmith three. Just for getting this thing up because that is... That's insanity. I And I completely want a searing, puncturing slugger. That is beautiful. And, like, obviously, because it's, like, relentless, if I had a high luck build that had more criticals in it, that would be even more insane. But I'm not really about criticals, I'm more about sneak attack criticals. But even so, that's just such a ridiculous amount of damage. And it syncs with my power armor, because I get an extra 15% uh, energy damage on top of that 75. So that makes it even more stupidly powerful, because I'll be 15% of 75 be 7.5 uh so about an extra 10 so that's actually 85 energy damage or so on top of that 468 on the ballistic that's mad okay yes blacksmith 3 at some point soon and a whole bunch of new stuff here great that's really good oh it turns out i can make it better anyway because aluminium apparently weighted and yellow weighted and pink that's new as well. I'm not sure if this is specific to Keto's weapon or if this is just stuff that's been added by the DLC for all baseball bats. But if I can just get some lead and some wood, and by the way, I've got plenty of lead and wood just kind of sitting around at home. That goes up to four. Okay, this is the most powerful weapon in the game. Oh, yes. I like this as well. I just like having a baseball bat with some rockets on it. That is just the sort of thing I want to be seeing. Yes, indeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is enough for now. Next time, I think I kind of feel like going to the world of refreshments. I was told in the comments that could actually be one of the more difficult worlds for me. I don't know why. I'm assuming that Nukalurk and Nukalurk Queens are there, and I've never had too much trouble with Myalurks in the past. But yeah, a couple of separate people mentioned in the comments they thought that was going to be the most difficult world for me. So I'm kind of interested to see why that might be. So we will go and explore there then. I might also do a little bit of like radiant questing just very quickly, mostly off screen, just for the sake of getting myself up to the next level. Because I really, really, really want that Blacksmith 3 right now. Because after we do that, this weapon here is going to become the most powerful melee weapon in the game. Without any exception whatsoever. The only way you can get more powerful is if you just happen to have like instigating on something that's technically weaker. But in terms of like the base damage, this will be better. Ooh, if you could transfer this onto an instigating baseball bat. Oh, oh my. An instigating baseball bat just became... Yeah, if you can get an instigating baseball bat, that's it. That is literally the most powerful weapon in the game. Nothing can top that. Not even close. So that would be a real pièce de résistance right there. So more coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Fallout 4: Nuka World. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Here, have a hat. Oh, you don't have a head. I'm sorry. That was really insensitive of me. Oh, I don't want to interface with whatever this is. But all right. Oh God, he's running Windows 8. No bloody wonder it's all gone. Tits up. Fire extinguisher if it's a choice between you and me. I'm afraid I'm sacrificing you just FYI.